down by Capers. They want to play off early, and he hits his first three attempts. But the Huskies have turned this game into. Thompson. 4-3. Give him 30 on the night. Thompson. With 38 points. He is one point shy of Reggie Miller's tournament record for a non-overtime game. Drives to the lane. And scores. 41. That ties the Pac-10 record. Thank you. Morgan misses the first, Thompson gets it, scores, give him 43. We're here at the Warriors practice facility and draft prospects coming in just about uh, a week away from the draft. And we've got Clay Thompson from Washington mm -hmm. State, a sharpshooter. And uh, yeah. someone who's really uh, been involved in basketball all your life because your dad mm -hmm. was the overall number one draft pick in 1978, played 12 years in the league, yeah. three championships with the Lakers. And what's mm -hmm. it like having a dad who was that famous and, and uh, such an outstanding basketball player. That was, it, was pretty, it was pretty cool, you know, growing up. Kind of living in his shadow, but that's all right. I was just thankful he was around because he has so much knowledge about the game that I got from him. And I'm just thankful he was, he was there for me since I was a kid. And uh, yes, yeah, I love him to death and I'm happy he's always been there. Well, we know about your prowess at uh, Washington State and uh, led the conference in three-point shooting, uh, uh, three points made and led the conference in scoring this year. Coming out after your junior year, you contemplated coming out after your sophomore year. What made you stay around for another year? Um, I just loved college at the time, and I felt like I wasn't you know, physically ready. And um, I think it was a great decision to come back because uh, you know, we had a pretty good season. And I, I mean, I loved Pullman, it was a great experience. And um, I'm happy I came back because you know, I got to be with my teammates another year. And college is really fun, and I'll miss it a little bit, but you know, I'm ready for that next stage. Your dad was a big man, and you're a big guard, 6'6". Yeah. Six, six. So yeah. growing up, did you play a lot of one-on-one -on -one with him? Yeah, but it wasn't fair at the time. You know, he was slow, but, <laughs> but when he'd get down like 10 to 3, he would just back us down in the post and throw up some Kareem Skyhook or something. And, you know, we'd be, we're six foot in eighth grade, and we're like, come on, Dad, you can't do that. But yeah, he still had, he had touch for a big man, too. That's why I didn't know. Well, we're talking about outside uh, shooting touch. Why don't we mm -hmm. take a look? We've got some video here, and we want to talk you know, several aspects of your game. And First of all, you're one of the terrific spot-up shooters, and here you are going against your rival, Washington, mm -hmm. and just kind of floating around here. This, this, this particular play, the ball just happens to bounce your way, but you're always yeah. ready to shoot. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, I've always been a shooter since I was in about, when I started playing basketball competitively, like third grade. And I can thank my dad and my shooting coach, Jody Gardner, for developing my form because, you know, that's one of my, the key staples of my game is being able to catch and shoot. And um, I'm so thankful for that because if you're a shooter, you can play for a long time. Just drifted to the corner again. Mm -hmm. You like zone defense against you, don't I you? I love zone defense, you know. It's just, it's just like practice. You'll stand out there and catch and shoot. You know, you don't have to run off any screens or anything. Your feet are set. Well, speaking of screens, uh, let's see how you move. You know, anybody can you know, catch that ball and, and take the shot, whether mm -hmm. they make it or not is another question. You've got a great uh, shooting touch. Let's, let's watch you run off some screens here and see how you move without the basketball. Because it's, uh, in the NBA game, it's very fast. You've got to read the defense quickly, okay? You're going on that baseline. Mm -hmm. For a minute, I thought I was watching, watching Reggie Miller there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Abe just made a great, Abe was a great screener for us. You know, he's always head hunting. He just made a great play there. I just ran off and got open. Come off again. Yep. Because you know, every time I come off a screen, all I got to think is turn my shoulders, get them square to the basket, and get my feet square as well. And every time I got my feet square. Let's watch this one again. Let's okay. watch this one again. I like, I like what you did in this last play. And uh, we're going to pause it. Okay. You, this, this is, to me, a terrific read because the defender tries to take the shortcut, mm -hmm. and instead of coming off that screen out to the elbow, mm -hmm. again you take you step back towards yeah. the baseline. So uh, tell me, tell me your thought process right here. You know, he tries to cut over the screen. I just plant my left foot. You know, give me a lot of power to step back. Yeah. All I need is a couple of seconds to get my shot off. So Faisal made a great pass, and DeAndre made a great screen. Plant that foot, got a perfect shot. Now uh, we're not going to run this just yet because. Spot-up shooters, yeah, if that's all they're going to do, pretty soon people aren't going to leave you. Yep. Did you add something to your game this year, uh, in the last couple of years, to get to the free throw line, taking it to the basket a little bit more? 
Oh yeah, I think uh, I just worked so much this summer on my quickness, my ball handling. And Coach Bone helped me so much with just encouraging me to attack the rim and attack the basket. Because in uh, Coach Bennett's system, I was more just a spot up shooter, come off screens. And he encouraged me to be more, more versatile and multidimensional. I know, when I, when I was 6'4", about 170 pounds, oh, dang. And, and had that kind of quickness. And, but I'll tell you what, I wasn't a great ball handler. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious about you at 6'6", because it really bothered me when I got some quick six-footer, yeah. six one that got down into you and I couldn't put the ball on the floor. Mm -hmm. does, that, does that bother you at all? Not really, because you know I was only six foot my freshman year, and I had uh -huh. to deal with those guys on a nightly basis in high school. So I got used to it as I grew, and uh, I'm thankful I grew kind of late because I kept those guard skills. And that uh, doesn't bother me that much. It's just my size and my advantage. Okay. Well, I know you went to the free throw line a lot. Let's see how you attack the basket. Mm -hmm. They're a little man to man here. Okay, you take that to the basket. Yep, a little jump hook right there. Okay, and here's another play coming off the screen. See the opening. Uh, I'm curious. I want to see Whoops. that one again. Well, you, they, you, but you recovered. Yeah. It looked like you had a chance inside. Let's let's pause this inside here. Oh yeah. Because after you lose it, you recognize that there are big people around, and you went with your left hand to the other side of the rim. It looks like you use the rim as an offensive weapon. Mm -hmm. You do that a lot. Yeah. Oh yeah. Just because you know, I, I see myself as a good athlete, but I'm no Demar Derozan or Kobe Bryant leaving ability. So I just try to. You, that, that rim can be a great def defender for you. Yeah. And um, with with man on the other side of the rim, you know, trying to block my shot, I got a pretty good left hand, so I just try to use that rim to, you know, to shield him. So uh, you understand that? Oh yeah. How that rim can be a, a great weapon for mm -hmm. you, because so, a big man can't get through it. Yep. I actually seen big man try and block a shot, and they get their hand stuck in the rim. So uh -huh. that's a pretty good sign. Uh -huh. What's your biggest challenge now coming to the NBA? Um, you know, I'm going to have to have a clean slate because I'm a rookie. I'm going to have to prove myself again. It's probably just adjusting the speed of the game, you know, because 24 second shot clock, a lot more possession in the game, a lot of running up and down the court. And I just think with the strength aspect, too, I'm going to have to get a little bit stronger just because, you know, I'm playing guys who are the man on their college team, too. So uh, the biggest adjustment for me, like probably the speed of the game, just uh -huh. getting used to that 24 second shot clock and you know, having a good motor, because I think that would carry me a long way. Your arm's not going to get tired from shooting them, will it? No, never. No, <laughs> never. I can shoot. I love shooting. I can shoot all day. Well, I'll tell you what, you're a hot prospect. You're uh, one of the great shooters in the draft this year. Everyone knows that. Wish you a lot of luck, and Thank it's you. really been uh, nice getting to know you a little bit and sitting right. down and seeing some of that play for you, Clay. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Barnett.